Hello everyone. Today we are starting a new series of broadcasts, which we mentioned a little in our Telegram channel and other social media platforms. This time it will be a pilot episode. The series of broadcasts is directly related to the legacy of Carlos Castaneda, and the whole task in general, the entire meaning of it, is to support the Global XLAN project. This is something special, I hope, probably exclusive, something that others do not have. And now my co-host Igor will explain why we decided to take this path. Igor, the floor is yours. Yes, hello everyone. The main idea of this project is to quickly, almost every two weeks, provide you with simply awesome, cool, high quality content on the topic of Carlos Castaneda. Because the series we are making in our project, specifically the film, take a lot of time both in production and during filming and so on and so that you don't have to wait for six months and have some interesting content on a topic that really interests you since you are on our channel. We decided to create this format. In the meantime, I will tell you a little about myself. My name is Igor. At the age of 16, I met a shaman who introduced me to the entire world of shamanism, the world of Carlos Castaneda, the world of visions and so on. And since then, my life has completely changed. I have seen almost everything that is in the books of Carlos Castaneda, except perhaps for teleportation. And that's why I am completely confident that this is a very cool thing and it should be studied. And for those who are genuinely interested in something beyond the usual daily routine in life, it is really worth and will be interesting for you to practically study the things that Carlos Castaneda proposed because they are truly effective. And why did you decide to share this with our audience? Have you had the thought for a long time that you want to pass on some of your knowledge to someone? Of course. First of all, pay attention to the format in which we are doing all this. These are not our real faces. These are not our real names. I don't need any fame. I don't want any recognition, meaning my personal story remains unknown. My appearance, it is not real. And people who look at all this, they might not get attached to my appearance and think about what I am really like as a person, right? But rather to receive the story behind the experiences of interacting with the spirit, with the power. The books of Carlos Castaneda talk about some really cool knowledge that is genuinely effective out of everything I have encountered in the world of esotericism for a very long time. I can say that this is the only thing that truly matters because here we have real practices that are applicable in reality, not just something you can read, relax, enjoy, and so on. In Castaneda's books, I once read that each of us, at some point, those who are on this path, the path of knowledge, make a kind of gesture for all of humanity, because humanity has given us so much in the grand scheme of things. And consider this a kind of gesture towards humanity, which will allow those few who truly manage to grasp this thread to see a lot of interesting things. Who do you think our audience is? You understand that we are targeting a specific niche. Who are you aiming for? Who will these broadcasts be for? I'll tell you this. If we take the world of Carlos Castaneda, and I have actually been living in it for many, many years, there are no specific people we are targeting here. This is not decided by us for the most part, but by the force or spirit, as described in the books of Carlos Castaneda. Therefore, people of all kinds, of all ages, from the young to the old, can see this. You could be 12 years old, or 60. At any moment in time, you might encounter what's happening around you, and you might wake up a little and see, wow, it's amazing. The spirit governs everything here. Igor, could you please explain how a person embarks on the path, the warrior's path within the teachings of Carlos Castaneda? What leads them to this? How does the spirit choose a person? Why does a person step onto this path? Good question. How does the spirit choose a person? And how do people come there in general? Carlos Castaneda has an interesting chapter on this, or rather, an entire section of the book. He talks about how we all experience so-called abstract cause. And one of the very first abstract cause is the knock of the spirit. The so-called thing that happens to every person who one way or another steps onto this path. And as a result of interacting with it, you just get on and can't really get off. Although at this phase, many can still fall off for the most part. So each of us, those who have truly reached some kind of vision, those who have managed to shift their assemblage point to see the world from different perspectives that are unlike ordinary perception, completely unlike it, 
These are entirely different worlds. So each of us has a story that we can generally speaking tell. Mine was very extremely elaborate. I was standing at the bus stop. I was only 16 years old then. You could say a teenager who was just trying to understand what this world is like by feeling his way around. And I see an announcement that says, if a spirit knocks on your door, call and a phone number. And I didn't understand anything about it at all. And it seemed to me at the time that it was some kind of silly cult. But since I was having fun and was interested in learning new things and also had a good sense of humor, my friend and I decided to call them just for a laugh. We simply found ourselves some entertainment. This eventually led to many years of practice with this shaman who turned out to be a true shaman. It turned out that he did not take money for this. He was not interested in any way in transmitting knowledge to specific students and he did not gather large groups of people around him. He literally had only one or two people who were involved in all of this and he did it himself by order, by the command of the force. And it was very interesting because at first I didn't take him seriously at all and to put it bluntly, I was absolutely unyielding. So for the first two to three years, I didn't see any what he was talking about. It seemed to me that he had lost his mind. Then certain events occurred that completely shifted my perception and I finally saw what it was all about. And let me clarify right away, these events were not related to any hallucinogens. They were absolutely pure events. Shaman himself tell me, was he specifically following Carlos Castaneda or did he have something of his own? No, he rather had his own tradition. He originally comes from Siberia. And this entire tradition comes from there, from that branch, from the shamanic line near the city of Abakan, if you know such a city. So it was a kind of branch that simply understood that the teachings of Carlos Castaneda were close to what they themselves saw and did. So he was familiar with the books naturally. He read them. He knew what they were about, right? And did he connect his teachings with them? He understood very well as he claimed he was a seer. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to verify this because by the time I learned to see, he was no longer around. So, and also, well, he literally followed everything that was written in the books of Carlos Castaneda. And another book was by Tune Mores, which they often recommended to us. There were several people who, in principle, could astral project, as we called it back then, essentially projecting the body in a dream. They could communicate directly with the spirit, with the force of interaction, and so on. Well, okay, but tell me, in your opinion, a person who enters the world of Carlos Castaneda but does not meet a teacher has to navigate through the thickets of knowledge on their own. Many people drop out at this stage, one way or another. What Don Juan talked about, many are just broken empty pots, a broken pot through which knowledge flows out like water. This happens most often, doesn't it? Well, yes. If you take the book and look at what it says, it says that on the path of knowledge, there are no volunteers. Absolutely. They are usually lured by power through various tricks. This is the abstract core. It is called the trick of the spirit. And that's exactly what it is. And I wasn't a volunteer either, because when we went there, we were just going there to have fun. Overall, our idea was to have fun, laugh and enjoy ourselves. And for a whole year, we went there just to have fun, while at the same time, things were happening to us that did not fit into the usual understanding of the world. I agree that people who enter the world of Carlos Castaneda and say, I want to gain power, give me the ability to see, and so on. These people do not overcome the first barriers they encounter. As a rule, they lack unbending intent. But I also want to say that this is not some kind of mathematical formula that is written down and supposed to be the same for everyone. If you have an unbending intent and are truly interested to the point that you are ready to move forward, then you can do everything on your own without any teacher, which in the grand scheme of things I did at some point because the shaman himself quickly disappeared from my life. He stayed there for two years and then disappeared. I had to do further things on my own and the abstract core called the invasion of the spirit happened to me when the shaman and their remembrance were nearby. All of Carlos Castaneda's books for the most part are tales of power, right? Just all of them. Most people who practice Castaneda, if you ask them what interesting things they took from these books, 
most people start to answer, well, the warrior's path. Well, dreaming. Well, vision and so on. So, they start talking about things that are actually secondary. And for the most part, they miss the most important thing, which until I hear someone respond in that way, I immediately understand that they have not yet had their true experience. And the most important answer that I would always expect from such people, and only a few have said it in my lifetime, is an encounter with the spirit. Yes. And in general, the focus is on power and spirit. Because even though this whole story is about spirit and power, it is found in the books somewhere deep within, as if it is always in the background. It is present in almost every chapter and very often appears in the descriptions of what Don Juan says. For me, it was such an abstraction that it didn't fall within my range of interests at all. All I was interested in at that time essentially was, I don't know, inflating my sense of self-importance and somehow dominating the people around me. Back then, I didn't understand this at all, naturally. So, I realized much later that I was actually doing all of this for that reason in the beginning. These were the very tricks that were happening to me. The books of Carlos Castaneda are written in such a way that everyone who reads them gets the feeling of, oh, I can get something out of this, I can use it to my advantage, I can somehow interact with this world and extract special effects from it that others can't, so I will be cooler than others and so on. Let's be honest, most of us are egoists from the very beginning, and I still consider myself a terrible egoist. Nothing much has changed for me. In the same place with Don Juan, essentially, the first book of the teachings of Don Juan, it specifically states that when a person embarks on the path of knowledge, the first step is that they expect something they will never receive. And we all go through this. We all wait for something. And in fact, this can even be to a lesser extent, for example, working with the same dreams. And we hope that everything will work out right away, but we immediately run into a wall, which is actually so multi-layered, you understand that it is connected. You can't just learn to look at your hands. You have to change your way of life in order to concentrate your attention, a specific kind of attention, and work with focusing. Thus, you have to change yourself. And naturally, at first, we don't want to do this at all. In essence, we really want all of this to come easily. The power, the forces that Don Juan talks about, for them to just come easily. It turns out that it's not easy at all, that it's insanely difficult in reality. Well, yes, but I would say that depending on your alignment with power, yes, this can happen to you in completely different ways. I have met people whose dreams just happened like that. In other words, they never practiced them, but they could do things that would make others' hair stand on end like, I don't know, how is that even possible? For example, I had a girl who came to me in a dream, literally awakened my body in the dream, and we started communicating in that state. And the funny thing was that she hadn't learned any of this. She just had a strong, powerful intention and enough personal power. I wouldn't say they are the brightest, but that's another matter. However, I can say that, for example, I started having lucid dreams at the age of six, and I began to see them too without saying that I spent a lot of attention and energy on it. The only thing I ran into when I started doing this seriously was that as soon as you begin to divide your attention between reality and the dream reality, you start having, let's say, conflicts with reality. Because this reality is very much like a jealous woman, and as soon as you as soon as you start to take your attention away from this jealous woman of reality and switch it to dreaming, she starts trying in every possible way to bring you back. If you haven't yet gained personal power here, you won't be able to progress beyond a certain level of dreaming. In other words, it's a kind of safety valve to prevent people from simply getting lost in the wilderness of organics and disappearing immediately. Most people really struggle with dreaming. And to be honest, even though Castaneda divides people into stalkers and dreamers, I can say that they themselves write that each of them is both a dreamer and a stalker. It's just that some are better at one and others at the other. But if you are not a dreamer, then essentially you can't do anything. Because dreaming is the only natural way to shift the assemblage point. What alternatives do you have left if you are not a dreamer? It is the use of power plants in large quantities that will quickly kill and weaken you 
draining the last remnants of your strength. In other words, roughly speaking, it's a kind of good demonstration at the very beginning of the path if you are a complete fool, meaning you never had anything, never understood how the world works and you couldn't enter the dream state in any way. But in the future, this is a very serious obstacle for people. So if they do not practice dreaming, more precisely, dreaming, then, roughly speaking, nothing interesting is likely to happen to them because they simply do not know how to shift the assemblage point at will. What do you think? Yes, what can a person take away for themselves that is useful so that they understand that they can really move forward, that is, take a step ahead? Carlos Castaneda has a paradoxical phrase that says, there is no formula that can lead you on the path, no formula that guarantees you will interact with power there and so on, right? However, they do have it, this formula, which is the most interesting part. First of all, this might sound very silly and ridiculous, but read the books of Carlos Castaneda. If you take seven volumes on advanced mathematics and read them, dear viewers, after flipping through them like that, you will become a professor of advanced mathematics. No, therefore you need to read all the books. Naturally, like everyone else who encounters the works of Carlos Castaneda, I recommend starting with the third book because it has less about drugs and more about the subject matter. However, when you truly encounter the world of Carlos Castaneda, so to speak, in the best way, and not just by hearsay, the first two books will reveal themselves to you in a completely different light. In other words, you will stop seeing those drugs there, you will stop seeing some kind of foolishness that people do, which is incomprehensible. So all this shamanism, which is heavily embellished in the first and second books, will take a back seat. The focus will be on the spirit, the power, and how fascinating it was for Carlos Castaneda to be drawn into this world of sorcerers, essentially. So read them in a loop. That is, the first thing I did before I truly experienced the invasion of the spirit was to read these books in a loop. I just read them in a loop. Vroom, vroom, vroom. How does it work, Neb? You focus your attention, you focus your intention, and the intention of the ancient sorcerers, in fact, which is embedded in these books, grabs you like this, hooks you. And with you, whether you want it or not, stories start happening that directly. You simply become a character from the books of Carlos Castaneda. So you are not just reading about them. After a while, you will find that you are already there. I can compare the before and after, so to speak. Many people love before and after, right? It's just a trend. Show me what it was like before and what it became after. So before, it was like, if anyone understands, an 8-bit life where everything is in large pixels with very few beautiful colors. I would say it's even less than 8-bit, almost a black and white picture of life that shows you nothing new, just keeps spinning around and around. Over time, when you truly encounter the spirit, yes, you experience an invasion of the spirit. It's as if you are transitioning into some kind of ultra-modern, super-realistic graphics in your life. The whole world blooms with colors and randomness disappears from your life. Therefore, very often in the books of Carlos Castaneda, you can find the expression that with magicians, there is no such thing as coincidence. That is, if he encounters Ken, he understands that it is not by chance. It is his power that brought them together. And you also become a part of all this. You could say you gain involvement, happiness. So you become happy simply because you understand that the world you are in is one big, insanely cool fairy tale, game, mystery, whatever. All these epithets fit. You just start living as if you were a character in an exciting movie. That is, most of the coolest experiences I've had in my life have always been pure, absolutely. And this is actually important because anyone who uses psychedelics risks losing their sense of reality, which by the way, Don Juan often mentioned, saying that it is not worth distorting your tonal. Your tonal should be healthy, good, and powerful. In this case, tonal refers to our physical body. Also, besides the fact that it's fun to read books in a loop, it is generally recommended to do so without stopping. If you really want to get closer as quickly as possible, the recommendation is simple. Read books every day. And if you have read them all, start over, go in circles, keep going, because you will see how many layers will be revealed to you 
It's somehow impossible to study a volume on higher mathematics in one reading. The same goes for these extremely complex books. They are indeed very complex. Why are so few people on this path at all? Because there isn't something like, you know, a fast food burger that you eat quickly and you're good and full and so on. It's actually the opposite. Carlos Castaneda provides extremely complex books with descriptions of very intricate actions that need to be performed in the correct sequence. And when you read them, you get a sort of barcode at the beginning, gaps in the understanding of what is written there. And only there, after some time, will you begin to understand it. Therefore, this is just an assignment for all days. Well, the second point is very interesting. It's something they talked about, and it's recorded as a key action. So, it says that it is not necessary to have any guru or teacher in your life. Yes, it is not necessary. It all starts with someone, at least someone, somewhere through books, through podcasts, like the ones you are watching. Guys, yes, someone just has to give you the very idea that it is possible, yes. Because until you get the idea that it is possible, you won't even act. Because that's how our brain works for the most part. That's the first thing. Get the idea that it is possible. The second is to choose one simple action and perform it with unwavering intent. That is to develop that very unbending intent. Once you have mastered this, everything else will simply follow. What does this mean? For example, you choose the simplest actions that you can definitely perform every day. Well, for example, you could start keeping a dream journal if you're interested in dreams, or you could start practicing something. For instance, I personally began doing the Eye of the Revival. So, at one point, I started practicing the Eye of Revelation. It's a simple yoga routine that takes 15 minutes a day. The key is that you do it every day without skipping. You are not allowed to miss a day. In about two to three years, you develop such an unbending intent that you become like a barge that cannot be stopped. After that, you can really achieve anything. For example, if you want to become wealthy, start a business. You commit to it and your power flows there. Want to become enlightened? You commit to it and your power flows there. Want to start seeing energy? You commit to it and your power flows there. Want to dream? Your power flows there. So you have the ability to apply your unbending intent to anything after this. So choose one simple action to do and do it for at least the next year. Yes, it is constant, but every day, if it works out, it will be a kind of test to see if you are a broken pot or not. So, and now, you know, half of the audience, including me, well, okay, thanks. Let's go to another <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Guys, for those watching this episode, its goal is not to dive deep into anything. Its goal, first of all, is to find out if you like this kind of content. Can you watch something like this? Or do you feel sick from all this fake virtual stuff? That's the first thing. And the second, if you have any questions, they seem to be straight from the world of Carlos Castaneda. There with behavior as a witness, anything, be sure to write in the comments, ask these questions. We will choose the most interesting ones and definitely cover them in the next podcast, which will be more extensive. And I would add that if you want to share your own experience and have something to tell, please write to us. In principle, we can come up with a system to invite our guests. It absolutely doesn't matter from which part of the world. If you really have something to share, write to us, and then we'll see what comes of it. The Spirit will guide us. Yes, may the Force be with us. Goodbye, everyone. All the best. Yes, take care.